Hey guys, Bingo Cat here, and today I'm going to give you guys my review on the Dell XPS 15 laptop. This is the Dell XPS 15 9516 laptop released in early 2017. This comes with either an Intel Core i5 or i7 Kiwi Lake processor, and I went ahead and got the i7 variant. So for those of you who don't know, maybe you guys didn't see the previous video, I got myself a Dell XPS 15 a few months ago. I think it was around late May. The reason I got this is because I simply needed a more powerful computer on the go. I also have a 2012 MacBook Air, a 13 inch one with an Intel Core i5 processor. I think it was an Ivy Bridge processor with eight gigs of RAM and 512 gigabytes of SSD storage. and. It's not bad, but it's not powerful. And so uh, I was expecting in May that I wouldn't be at home as much as I have been. And so I decided I wanted a more powerful laptop. So I went ahead and picked up this laptop. It not to replace my desktop, but sort of to supplement my desktop so I could do stuff that you know might require more intense processing power that kind of thing on the go like video editing or even some light to moderate gaming so the dell xps 15 fit the picture i wanted something slim something light still plenty powerful but plenty of ports and a good screen and capable of doing some light to moderate gaming and definitely capable of productivity tasks and heavier productivity tasks like video editing, photo editing. So I picked up this Dell XPS 15. It looks nice. It's fairly thin for a powerful laptop. It just um, it just fit the bill. I didn't want like I didn't want any laptop bigger than 15 inches, so that's why I got this. I could have got a more powerful laptop, probably for cheaper, but you won't have the nice thinner design stuff like that. I'm 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 not really too much of a big fan of the aesthetics of gaming laptops. I think they just look ugly. So that's why I got this thing. So if we go ahead and look at the laptop as a nice aluminum unibody design, aluminum on the back aluminum on the top here and of course you got your Dell logo like on every other Dell laptop so if you look at the side there's power this is USB 3 now I thought this was going to be USB 3.1 but on Dell's website um, it says it's USB 3 but it's not really that big of a deal to be honest the only thing that kind of irks me is they just came out with some new Dell Inspire on laptops that have USB-A 3.1 port, so it's kind of a bummer not to have it on here, but this is also an older laptop model, so there's that. Then you have an HDMI port, and then you have a Thunderbolt 3 port, which, it's nice, but I read, um, I read that this Thunderbolt 3 port isn't going to support you using, um, external graphics cards, so I thought you would be able to, so... Um, I was thinking this port would be nice for future proofing, but maybe it really won't be, <laughs> to be honest. But you can still definitely hook up displays and other USB peripherals to this uh, USB port here. Or, excuse me, Thunderbolt 3 port here, which, you know, is also USB Type-C. So, there's that. And also, we do indeed get a headphone jack. So, that's pretty nice. Shame you gotta mention that these days, but... <laughs> There's that. Then you have a Kensington lock slot, even though I don't use it at all. Then you have an indicator here. You just press down on a button here. And this is your charge indicator. If it's all lit up, that means the laptop's fully charged. Um, and then the less lights that light up, it means your laptop is basically losing charge. Then we have another USB 3.0 port and a full-size SD card slot. Now, the port selection on this laptop is good. The only thing that it's missing that I wish it had was, I wish it had an Ethernet port. Now, some people might disagree with me, but, you know, I would gladly... I would gladly trade, you know, something like the SD card slot for an Ethernet port, but that's just my opinion. A lot of people, especially professionals, wish this laptop is aimed more at professionals, would probably disagree with that, but that's just my opinion. I miss um, having an Ethernet port. And there's also a little charging indicator that is not lit right now on the front of the laptop. Or one thing I want to mention about this laptop before we go ahead and open the lid is Dell laptops. I don't think all of them are like this, but 
One of the things I was definitely looking for in this laptop, and I'm glad that I got, is that it's serviceable. So I can definitely replace parts in here. Nothing is really soldered to the motherboard that I'd want to replace, like RAM or the SSD or anything like that. If the SSD fills, I can easily put in a new one. If the RAM fills, I can easily put a new RAM. Dell has instructions on how to do all that stuff on their website, so that's really nice. It's always something I liked about Dell computers is that they're easily serviceable. It's nice when you can actually replace parts in it instead of having to buy a whole new device when just one piece, one part in your device breaks. So I do like that about this laptop. Let's go ahead and open the laptop. You might. Um, see a reflection of me? Hi. <laughs> Laptop's actually already on. I meant to actually turn it off before um, starting this video, so I'm going to do that real quickly. Alright, so this is what the laptop looks like opened with it turned off. So, it looks fairly simple. You got a nice big trackpad here. Now this trackpad is about the same size trackpad that you would find on a MacBook um, from before 2016. Like, if you have a uh, older, and by older I mean like 2009 through 2015 MacBook of some sort, the trackpad is roughly this size, but um, it's a good trackpad. I like it. It's responsive. It clicks down, as you guys might be able to hear. It clicks down like how a trackpad should, in my opinion. I'm not a huge fan of the, uh, force touch trackpads and the, well, it's not force touch that's a problem. It's that they use a haptic feedback engine instead of allowing you to actually physically click the buttons in the newer MacBooks. I don't like that. I prefer the actual clickable trackpads, but that's just my opinion. Now the keyboard, um, I believe these are actually, now the keyboard, I believe these are actually technically chiclet keys, but um, you do get quite a fair bit of travel while you're typing. It is definitely not uncomfortable to type on. It is a very comfortable keyboard to type on. And down here, I have a fingerprint scanner. Now, this is optional, by the way. You don't have to buy the laptop with a fingerprint scanner, but I did anyways. But I almost wonder if I actually should have bought it with the fingerprint scanner because it really does not work well, to be honest with you guys. But regarding the rest of the keyboard, pretty nice. Now, I kind of wish you see how the function keys up here have multiple functions on them, like you have your normal F6, and then you also have a fast forward button, or you have your brightness indicators up here. Um, while I'm on the keyboard, this is also a backlit keyboard, by the way, so that's pretty nice. Now. What I kind of wish that they did was, you know, instead of you having to press function and then the fast forward button, I kind of wish they just put a separate row of keys with the various miscellaneous functions. I feel like that would be easier. And I feel like they have the space to do that. So, you know, it's just an idea. Manufacturers don't have to do that, but I think that would be very cool to see. now. Even though this is a 15 inch laptop, by the way, notice how there's no number pad. That kind of disappointed me at first because some of Dell's lower end 15 inch laptops have number pads. So you naturally think, well, why wouldn't their higher end laptops have number pads? And while I don't have a definite answer for this, honestly, I think. Dell was just trying to find the easiest way to bring the design of the Dell XPS 13 to the 15 inch laptop line and I don't know, maybe just creating an almost duplicate laptop to the XPS 13 but with a 15 inch screen it just saved them time. Um, and maybe that's why they don't have a you know number pad but I have no idea. And the other possible reason is Maybe they wanted the center of the keyboard to be more in line with the trackpad. Honestly, I prefer that approach. The have the keyboard um, be right in front of the trackpad, basically at the exact center of it. I think it looks good. It feels natural. It's just, it's just how I like it. Now, notice how there are a lot of Dell laptops, especially older Dell laptops. Um, they have a little nub in the center, I believe, like, 
Lenovo calls it the track point. This laptop doesn't have it. And I believe most of Dell's modern laptops don't have that anymore. Now, that's not something I've ever liked or cared about because it's simply just slower than using the trackpad. So I have I don't care that that's not there, to be honest. Now, I'm glad Dell put the power buttons in separate from the keyboard. You'll notice in so many modern laptops that, especially in like MacBooks, they integrate the power button as a key on the keyboard. I hate that. I hate it so much because if I go and try to hit the backspace button, for instance, I might accidentally hit the power button and I really hate that because then I'll have to waste time waking up my computer from sleep. That's a minor inconvenience, but Thank you, Dell, for putting the power button in the place it should go. Now, this screen, you'll see it when I turn it on, but it's a touchscreen 4K screen. And, you know, I was really skeptical of going with a 4K display on this laptop because um, 4K scaling and Windows used to suck, and it still kind of does suck. But for the most part, most modern applications work well with 4K scaling, and even if an application decides not to work well with 4K scaling, Windows has a wide range of uh, scaling compatibility options that really do work. And so it's a kind of a pain to have to micromanage a couple of applications to make sure the scaling looks right. But other than that, I do not regret getting this display. It looks beautiful. It is the most beautiful display I think on anything that I've ever seen. I'm not kidding, it's that good. It meets 100% of Adobe RGB. It's just, this display was definitely built for photo editors, video editors, content creators, basically. And I really love this, this display. I do not regret getting it at all. So let's turn on this laptop. And the thing you might not, well, excuse me, the thing you might notice when I turn on this laptop is um, I got this laptop with an SSD, so, it's, so, uh, so it should turn on fairly quick. And so here's the login screen. Let's go ahead and log in. And for me, I'll just use the fingerprint reader. All right, and we're logged in. Now let's go ahead and pull up the specs of this computer. All right, so here's the specs of the laptop. So I have the latest version of Windows 10 Pro, the 64-bit version of Windows 10, because there's pretty much, in my opinion, no reason to run the 32-bit version of Windows 10 nowadays. So you have the 64-bit edition of Windows 10 Pro running on here. And I have an Intel Core i7-7700HQ. So for those of you who don't know, that's a KB Lake um, Intel CPU running at 2.8 gigahertz. Um, and spec even tells you how hot your CPU is. Oh, that's actually cool. I didn't even realize that. It says it's 54 degrees Celsius. And so it has 32 gigabytes of dual channel um, DDR4 RAM in there. Now it does have Intel HD Graphics 630, but I also do have a dedicated GPU in here. So I have a GeForce GTX 1050 um, with four gigabytes of VRAM. It definitely does make the computer hotter and the battery life shorter, but I wanted a laptop that gave me pretty much the most power possible, but in a relatively small form factor. So. I'm glad Dell actually offered the option to put a GTX 1050 in there. I thought that was pretty nice, so I do not regret getting that at all. And then as far as storage goes, I have a one terabyte NVMe SSD, something else I don't regret getting at all. So I don't regret getting this computer at all, first of all. This computer is definitely a very, very, very good computer. So if I had to get into some of the things I don't like, first of all, some of the criticisms I have regarding this computer. Number one, battery life sucks. It really does. Um, what I mean by that is sometimes it might not even last you two hours. Dell claims that, you know, you'll definitely get at least a few hours of battery life on this laptop, but it is definitely seriously lacking. Even if I'm just doing things like web browsing, Battery life really sucks on this laptop. Now, if I got the 1080p display instead of the 4K display, it would definitely be a lot better. But 
if you're like me, got the 4K display, the really, really beautiful display, battery life's gonna suck. If you're planning to get the 4K display and you want a decent battery, this laptop is not the laptop for you. I always carry around my power adapter pretty much wherever I go because the battery life in my model here is simply, it simply sucks. So that's one of the things I don't like about this laptop. Now the second thing I don't like about this laptop is more than once when I've been running an intensive application like, you know, a game or doing some serious heavy multitasking, the computer thermal throttles. And for those of you who don't know what that means is that the computer will basically slow down everything, including the user interface until it cools down a little bit. Now, due to a combination of this being, you know, relatively thin and light, and the fact that I got the most powerful parts that I could put in this laptop, there is some thermal throttling every now and again. Uh, it doesn't happen that often. It really does not happen that often, but it, it still did happen more than once. So that's another thing I wasn't particularly a huge fan of. Now, the next thing I wasn't a huge fan of on this laptop, by the way, is you guys can't really see it on the camera, but this carbon fiber um, cover for the keyboard area, it gets really dirty really fast. You'll see like fingerprint smudges on there in minutes. I really don't like that. I kind of wish they went for a different material for the keyboard area. Something else I don't like about this laptop is, well, first of all, here's something I do like about this laptop. I like the bezel-less design. It's not truly bezel-less, not truly frameless, but as you guys can see, the border around the screen is super thin. However, this comes with a major downside is that there was no room up here to put the camera on the laptop, so they put it down here. And that is something that I really don't like about this laptop because it, if you're on Skype with someone or just trying to record a video, the camera on this laptop just looks weird. And here's, an, here's another thing I don't like about the camera is that the video quality on this camera is seriously awful. Like seriously. The camera on this computer is in a horrible spot and it's a horrible quality. It claims it's 720p, but you know, there's a difference between good 720p and bad 720p. And unfortunately, this computer definitely has bad 720p. So I would not use the camera for anything outside of like a Skype call or something like that. And then I think I already kind of mentioned this, but the fingerprint scanner doesn't work uh, half the time. It really doesn't work that well. I'll, I'll try and use it. And then Windows will tell me I have to put in my password because it can't recognize the fingerprint scanner. Now, things I do like about this laptop, the display. The display is one of the reasons you're getting this laptop. It looks gorgeous. And then, the keyboard is nice, the trackpad is nice, the build quality and feel of this laptop is overall very, very, very good. And then the other thing that you're mainly buying this laptop for besides the gorgeous looking display, it's powerful. Uh, it's a beast for, you know, a rel relatively small mobile computer. It, it seriously is that good. So. Um, if we can go ahead and do some basic tasks, so as you guys can see, I launched Google Chrome. It instantly launched. It had absolutely no problem. This computer is overall really speedy, and I'm sorry if uh, the screen looks like it's flickering. It's really not, but I guess my camera doesn't like the display somehow. And so if I go and I try the open edge, for example, bam, instant. Now if I try and open, I don't know, try and open the start menu, there's pretty much no user interface lag, so that is really, really nice. So if I were to go to youtube.com, and we are to go and watch one of my own videos, for example, and let's watch one that's in 4K. Let me turn off Flux, though. If you guys think maybe the screen on my laptop looked a little bit orange just because I was running a program called Flux. Sorry about that, I didn't notice that. So, as you guys can see, it is able to stream 4K, 60 FPS, um, no buffering. 
that's because my internet's actually fast enough though my internet connection is actually fast enough so that is pretty nice now if I were to go ahead and turn on that's the Google Chrome download the volume so let's search for Chrome. the internal speakers Get on this computer Chrome. aren't that bad but they aren't Chrome that desktop. good either Except, save. Cool. Now let's open folder and run. Um, I would definitely plan on using headphones or buying external speakers for this laptop if you want better sound quality. For built-in speakers, they're not that bad, but they're not that good either. So let's go ahead and just try and run a game. Here we go. Dirt Rally. We're just going to go ahead and click on Clubman Championship. We're going to resume the event in progress and wait for this to load. All right, so I guess we're racing in bomb holder germany hmm. if you run this game at higher graphical settings unfortunately frame rate will suffer and i don't really want to do that all right so here we go so it is going pretty smooth right now and it doesn't look that bad either it looks perfectly fine Mind you, you aren't going to be running most games at max settings. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Alright, here we go. And you know, I thought I would use this computer for gaming more, but to be honest, I use it more for productivity work. And just wait until I'm home to do gaming on my gaming desktop. But when I do play games on here, it's perfectly fine. You can also run like Overwatch, Grand Theft Auto 5. You can run most games with no problems, it just won't be at max settings. Alright. Alright, so I think I got the general gist of this laptop down, so... Do I recommend this laptop? It depends on the person, to be honest with you. I do not regret spending a single penny on this laptop. I like everything it does. I love the display. I also like it how it's touchscreen. The overall build quality of this laptop is top-notch. Seriously, I don't think I've ever owned a computer with as good build quality as this one. The specs are definitely powerful enough for my needs, so no complaints regarding the specs. I love it how the laptop has a variety of ports instead of having exclusively USB Type-C or Thunderbolt 3 or something like that, unlike, you know, some other laptops out there because, you know, I get that USB Type-C and Thunderbolt 3 are the future, but the future is not now. It's at least another few years away, so I'm glad they definitely have a wide selection of ports in case I need something. I definitely do not regret picking up this laptop, even though it was very pricey. And you can find similar spec computers from manufacturers like Lenovo for cheaper than what I paid for this. I paid a little bit over $2,500 for this. So. Do I recommend this? It depends who you are. If you want to use this for mainly gaming, don't get this laptop. You can get laptops that are similarly specced with 1080p screens for cheaper. Um, the reason that this cost a little bit more was because of the 4K display and the thinner form factor, among other things. Um, but if you want to get this laptop just for gaming, stay away from this laptop. Even Dell itself has some cheaper gaming laptops you can buy. I would maybe look for a laptop specifically marketed for gaming instead of getting this. Now, if you're a professional, like you want to do photo editing, video editing, development work on here, um, you want to toy with virtual machines, you want to compile code, do coding on here, this machine is for you. This machine was definitely geared more towards professionals. Now, if you're a person who just does web browsing, this computer is definitely not for you. You can do that on a tablet. You don't need a $2,500 laptop just to do web browsing watching YouTube. So. so overall, once again, I don't regret getting this laptop at all. It is definitely one of the best computers I've ever owned. It is definitely the best laptop I ever owned. It is the best display out of anything that I own. Just a display alone, man, makes this laptop worth it to me. But. 
Yeah, overall, good laptop. I 100% recommend it. That was my review of the Dell XPS 15, guys. I hope you guys liked this video. Make sure to check out my Twitter, Discord, and Instagram. Link down below in the video description. And go ahead and leave a like if you liked this video. Dislike it if you disliked it. And as always, I hope to see you guys next time. Goodbye.